What's up, guys and gals, and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be fooling around with a title called Leviathan's Fantasy. This is a game that I was really on the fence about featuring because there's two kind of forces that I think are at war with one another right now. The first is that this game is not quite ready for a Western distribution yet. The localization is just not there. However, the other side of the equation is that I personally have been waiting for a successor to Majesty for a really, really long time. If you've got the same opinions that I have about Majesty, it's that you really liked Majesty. Majesty was a super sick game about building a city and using a bounty flag system to send out adventurers to eliminate problems and complete quests and complete storylines and make money and stuff like that so that your city could defeat all the threats around and it could flourish. However, Majesty to me was always a game that didn't have a tremendous amount of depth given the time period that it came out in, and I found myself always wondering and preferring if there would ever be a Majesty style game that leans into being as complex as RimWorld is. So basically Majesty with all of the complexity and depth dialed up to 11. This is that game. Leviathan's Fantasy is unabashedly, unapologetically for all of its flaws, it is that game. It's Majesty, but super, super in depth with tons of things to do, tons of customization and tons of things going on for the low, low price of $8 and the game being really poorly translated. So today we're going to take a look at the game for about 30 minutes. I've been playing for two or three hours. I've been very impressed with what I've seen so far. The UI is a mess. The translation appears to be kind of like machine translated. Some of it's not translated at all, as you can see over on the right-hand corner. This game came out about six or seven months ago, and I was sitting on it trying to wait and see whether or not they would get the translation and localization done. It does appear to be getting better. I played this game for a couple of hours six months ago, and it was basically unreadable back then, whereas now I've actually made it reasonably far into the first level while being able to figure out contextually what I'm supposed to do. So that's a good thing, but I did want to kind of put it right on the front end of this video that this is one of those games that isn't quite ready yet, but it is a game that I'm very excited about, and I just couldn't keep my excitement corralled any longer. I figured I would bring you all into the fold and show Leviathan's fantasy. So let's dive in. Let's play the game for about 30 minutes. Let's see if this is the right game for you. Let's figure out if this is a game that you want to play, or if it's a game that you just hit the big old red eject button on. If after watching this, you find that you want to get the game for yourself, it's not an early access right now. The game is a completed product, but they have been patching it nonstop for the last six months. So it seems like a game that they're still interested in working on. My personal advice would be that like every effort needs to go into like localization stuff. The rest of the game is cool. It's functional, it all works, but localization is my main issue. From there, you'll also be able to find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream just in case you wanted to hang out live. So let's go ahead and get cruising. What is Leviathan's Fantasy? Leviathan's Fantasy is a game that takes place on the back, as you thought from the thumbnail, of a giant flying whale that exists inside a realm of gods. You can see a giant god walking around back there. Every god is responsible for cruising around the galaxy and finding corrupted realms and cleansing them using the aid of touristic heroes that fly in between the backs of different leviathans looking for adventure and fame and fortune. If they like where you live enough, they will move in and they will become your adventurers. And from that time on, you will be able to choose their equipment, choose their abilities, choose the way they level up, choose their attack orders, choose the way that they fight. Uh, you are also responsible for running a city like this game has got a lot of stuff going on and inside the city you'll be responsible for running hotels you'll be responsible for trading with merchants you'll be responsible for buying and trading with your adventurers because you can't just take their stuff this is a land of laws so when adventurers go out and they fight with monsters as you can see on the adventure map over here and they're slaying these monsters you can actually click on all of these little adventurers right here and you can look inside their backpack and you can see what loot they have on them right now you can see their equipment at the moment i only have two adventurers that are living with me and apparently i just got an achievement as well but ultimately there's three different maps in the game right now i'm on the first one each one has a different adventuring zone with sort of a different storyline and a different thing you're trying to accomplish oof the starfish king is over there huh that's one of my quests is i gotta beat the starfish king over there Wait, adventurer Lushan fell from a height and died? That popped up so quickly, though. Was that one of my heroes? 
I hope not. Parkin is one of my guys. This robot guy right here actually joined my town, and he's with me now. I can't tell him to go back to town. I want him to go back to town. It looks like I can reset him right there, so let's go ahead and pause the game real fast. And one of the things I've been meaning to do is that I very much wanted... Pause the game real fast. I need to find Parkin. So where is he? Okay, so Parkin is over here, and I actually... He joined my town, so I wanted to re-equip him with some stuff. So I was going to give him... This right here seems super OP. At the moment, I'll probably give him either the staff... Yeah, apply the staff to him, and then he can also put on a new helmet. So we'll go ahead and throw the new helmet on right there, too. And hopefully that will get re-equipped on him? I don't know. Well, he put the uh, he put the weapon on. That should help out his DPS anyways. He didn't get the rest of the stuff equipped. I actually kind of want to watch and see how he does. His weapons changed, too. Now he's got a shotgun and he's got, like, a sword. That's kind of cool that it actually shows up on the character. I dig that. He does appear to be hitting quite a bit harder. So really the core gameplay loop of this game is that you're trying to make a city that's comfortable enough, touristy enough, that these guys, these adventurers that come in just to opportunistically make money, uh, you want them to kind of show up and stay forever and be your homie forever more. That way you can control their equipment and you can also reincarnate them. So this game like also has kind of that... That underlying cultivation of meridians and humors and stuff, you can actually reincarnate your characters to increase their level cap so they can get higher and higher and higher level. And, and there's a lot of stuff to fiddle around and manage with here. I'd be straight up lying to you if I said that I had touched every portion of this game so far. Even after a couple hours, I'm still like finding new menus and new things to fiddle with. But for right now, what we need to do inside of our village, uh, one of the core mechanics of the game is that every X amount of time, an airship is going to show up. This airship is going to give you a number of different things that you can play around with, but you can spend money to do like a tourism board thing. Uh, this will allow your city to bring in more tourists. Uh, it looks like we can also advertise for more of them. It looks like we can also bring in more adventurers. We can bring in more workers, whatever it is you want to do. The main one that I need to do right now is I need to hire five more workers right there because not only do you have adventurers inside your town, you have workers. You can see my workers over here. They're mining that stone node right there. You can see my workers. They are working inside these buildings over here to produce things faster. You can see them working inside these little areas to increase the efficiency of the beds that my adventurers are healing inside of so these are little hotels right here that have different types of beds available and when adventurers get low on HP they come back to town and they sleep inside of them and when adventurers get bored they go to tourist shops and they buy curios that they can send back home to their families and stuff like that and they also bring back the things that they fight war so like when they kill mobs you know how you get trash loot in an MMO they sell their trash loot over here so for example I need fur in order to continue manufacturing and so there you go I just bought out a whole bunch of furs but if I also wanted to buy out all the stone that they've gathered I could do that I could search for fur one more time we've got fur dolls right there I could go in and look for wood so there's various I think it's actually called timber or something like that there you go so we've got timber on that side I could go in there and buy that and these are actually each and every one of those timbers I just bought a certain percentage of them are owned by the adventurers that are running around and they actually keep track of all the gold and everything that they have too so these adventurers are not only getting gold from killing mobs but they're getting gold from selling stuff to you in kind of the general auction house and the taxes being collected from there and then they can spend that money in the various facilities inside of your town it's all a big giant circle Along the way, in order to facilitate that, you're going to need to go to the lab. You can research objects that you have around. So, for example, I could study over here timber a couple of times, and that'll give me research points. You can then bring those over to this game's expansive tech trees that are pretty large with lots and lots of buildings and lots and lots of manufacturing and lots of stuff to unlock. As I said at the beginning of the video, this is just majesty with the complexity dialed up to 11 where everything has like different enhancement menus and upgrades and things you can fiddle around with. This is a game that it's going to take you a long, long time to get a handle on. 
I've been playing for a couple of hours, and I've been unlocking like one thing at a time and just kind of fiddling with it to see what happens next. Uh, let's see here. Primary building materials. Yeah, I can learn those. So that looks like I can make planks, I can make stone material, and I can make iron ingots. It looks like over here we've got basic blacksmithing. That might help out. It's quite expensive as far as my research points go. Is the lab doing okay over here? We're about to get two more points. All right, I can live with that. Did that unlock any new buildings that I can play around with? It did unlock a blacksmith. So this right here is kind of like a construction union. This building allows us to build out consumables that will allow us to build other buildings. So the building system in this game is weird. Uh, like I said, the UI in this game has extra steps that don't necessarily need to be there. Uh, this could just be your town center, and then all of the buildings would just be unlocked in here. And when you click and place them, it subtracts the amount. But for whatever reason, it makes you build the building as though it is like a sword or a shield or an armor. And then it gets added on into your building inventory, and then you can place the building inventory once or I'm sorry the building from your inventory once you get around so it's got like a few extra steps in there that don't need to be there that's exactly what I mean by this game has kind of like a wild UI that you're gonna have to get a handle on before you sink in with the title still that having been said I've been enjoying the game tremendously like there's a lot of cool things around here to play around with it appears to me as though all of these characters have like different classes and different motivations as well. How that factors into the game, I'm not super sure yet. I haven't gotten to that point where it becomes relevant. But if you click on these little guys, for example, Caroline right here, it'll say that she has a bloodline of a believer. And it'll give you a bunch of her... I guess those are kind of like her racial stats, I guess, for being one of those believers. So for example, like this guy over here has a pet bear. For the longest time, I thought they were fighting with the bear, but no, they have a pet bear, and not everybody has that, so I have to assume that on some level, everybody's got different classes, everybody's got different things going on. If you go in here and take a look at it, uh, you can find their move sequence, where if they move into the town, you can determine what their attack rotation is going to look like, and what abilities they use more or less. You can give them tasks, so for example, if I wanted to open up a bounty and just give people some XP, I could open up a kill bounty over here to come kill these coral rock crabs and you can manually decide who's going to go on that quest or you can just put it right there and as you can see with all this kind of text gore over here Morong and Beatrice went over there to go and get it uh, what does this do why is this blinking floating island thanks you for leaving some of its troubles please choose one of its thoughts okay yeah some broken armor I guess I guess the island is happy that I helped it resolve some of its problems. We've completed 600 tasks. We haven't, so like basically if you want to win the map, these are all the things that you have to do. And it all boils down to all these characters are kind of like PCs in an MMO. There's different mobs that have to be farmed. There's different bosses that have to be killed. And you're going to do that by cultivating people's skills, equipment, things like that. They also prestige, so they max out at level 50. But then you can do a cultivation system where you reincarnate them as a level one, but their stat caps will be way higher when they level up again. And so there's a prestige system in here in case you want to keep playing and playing and playing. This is really one of those mind-boggling games that I really sincerely think that if they can get the translation really bolted down with a really strong localization team uh, in English at the bare minimum, I feel like there's an audience out there that wants to play this game because how many games are there out there that are that are like Majesty? Not that many, I would think. Not that many left anyways. And so if you're a Majesty fan, it's been a real dry season for a really long amount of time. I'll probably, I want them to explore this island too. Let's put a bounty to go and explore over there. And we'll just kind of see who takes it. So it looks like all of my highest level guys did. So Parkin, Lushana, and Takina all wanted to go on over there. I'll probably put down a few more exploration beacons as well just around to see if we can find like what's over there for example put that over there and then we'll probably put like an exploratory token over there and it looks like people are accepting it uh, the enemies do aggro by the way but they should ignore them so long as they're on kind of like a certain adventure it looks like we found a dungeon right there I haven't done a dungeon yet Neil's brother you're back go to brother Frank 
Okay, I think Frank is back by the campfire over here. Damn, where did they go? Did they really encounter danger? Monsters are everywhere in this damn place. I should have never came here. You got trouble? Who's there? I'm the Leviathan. The all-powerful one that the Ventures possess? Go find my brother Frendo now. I think I did, but maybe I did it out of order. Where was Neil's brother Frendo? Hey, adventurers. Uh, the road ahead's kind of clear after we got rid of the crabs. You could go over and have a look. There's many traces of feist, even strange animal footprints over there. Find my partner near the lighthouse. Is there even, like, a light? Oh, yeah, there's a lighthouse over here. Okay, that guy's getting chased by an alligator running for his life. Oh, is that the guy? Stay away from me, dreadful monster. Who's talking to me? I'm the Leviathan, the help Brother Frank asked for. Oh, I see. There's a lot of monsters around here, so it's not really convenient for me to talk. Uh, kill them. Fair enough. They're keeping it simple on this map. How high level are these little starfish dudes over here? Ten? Oh, it looks like there's infighting, too, maybe? Guy named Ezio over there who's throwing down on somebody. I have no clue what that thing is. A bronze warrior guard. Okay. Fair enough. We explored the island pretty aggressively. It looks like over here, they're still farming the rock crabs. I was hoping some of my lower level guys would get on in here and do this. Ooh, he's got like an upgraded ability. Okay, he's got like some good stuff in there. Sounds good. We gave people some more jobs. I think we just need to keep some jobs up, too, down here, just to, like, keep people happy. I think that's why people haven't been moving into my town, is because I haven't really been placing enough bounty tokens. What am I low on? I'm low on iron. Let's do a collection quest over here for this iron node, too. There we go. And people, there they all go. Every single one of them wants to go do that collection quest. Gotcha. I mean, it's a cool game, dude. If you can mash your way through the parts of it that are not translated and figure it out contextually, this is a really fun game. I like it a lot. I've been enjoying it. Some of the reviews said that it's buggy as hell and nothing works, but I haven't really had a problem with that so far. Everything's been working okay. I think we should probably... Did I ever make a blacksmith? I did. There it is. All right, so let's get a blacksmith and add them in on this little street corner over here. I don't know what the front side of the building is, though. It's got to be this side right here. There's no indicator that tells you the front side of the building, from what I can tell. Like, when you go to place it and rotate it, one side is filled in, but if you look at the building, that's usually clearly not the front side. So maybe it's supposed to count as the back side or something, and I'm just not being very smart with my stupid, dumb brain. Uh, we've got eight free villagers right now. Let's go ahead and assign a couple of them to blacksmithing. What can I make inside of here? So it looks like we can make golden war hammers, we can make great swords, we can make all kinds of goodies. Did they also sell them for him here, or do I have to sell that from over here? Put that on auto. There we go. Auto list the fur dolls. People want to buy stuff, and apparently it wasn't auto listed. And we've got a whole bunch of fur dolls. Are the beds still good? Okay, the beds are still good. Every time they spend like 20 or 30 coins, if you go on... Where's an adventurer around here? There's one. Uh, never mind, it's not an adventurer. That's a tourist. Lushan, he's one. Well, it's not letting me select Lushan for some reason. Maybe if I'm only like in the adventuring area. I don't know. I might have too many windows open or something like that too. Strange. Either way, I could take a look at Ophelia. You see the favor right here? You're trying to fill that up all the way. Once that fills up all the way, you can go to the Adventurer's Guild, and these guys will apply to be a part of your city. And then, once they become a part of your city, you can move them into these Adventurer's Dormitories right here, like we just got Beatrice. Uh, and then, we can actually equip Beatrice with stuff to make her a stronger combatant. She needs to be in the main city. I would maybe get rid of that as a feature, because I've just been using the Unstuck command to get them back into the city in order to, like, re-equip them. Maybe allow the player to re-equip them no matter where they are. It's just an unnecessary hindrance considering you don't really have any control over these characters. Like, you can't tell them to come back to town except for using the reset over here in order to get them to come back. And so it might be a good idea to do that. Uh, let's just manufacture some stuff, dude. We got Blackwater Stabs over here. We've got a pearly gun polearm right there. A two-handed sword. I'm sorry, a two-sided sword. We got bows over here as well. Ornate dual swords. 
Looks like we need broken weapons in order to make those. Is that a thing that I can buy from the shop over here? Let's see if they've been looting them off of any dead mobs. Broken. Uh, they do have them, yes. They cost four apiece. We have the money for that. We can buy those out. That's no problem. Go ahead and buy all those so we can get our manufacturing going. And now... I'll probably make like... Let's make... Call it five swords. We'll make like five bows. And then we'll make like some ornate dual wielding stuff. We'll make some pole arms. We'll make a little bit of something for everybody. Each of these buildings also, it appears to have like an upgrade slot inside of it. Like I said, dude, just click on tabs, click around with this game. The tutorial is not gonna teach you. The, so the tutorial will teach you the bare basics of how to get through the game. There's one step of the tutorial that is not translated. It's still in Chinese. Uh, I figured it out. You just gotta hire five workers when I got to that part and you hire them off the airship. And I figured out how to do that anyways on my own and just kind of like accidentally completed it. Uh, yeah, five more guys is good. Give me five more workers. I now got 30 people living inside my town. Oh yeah, also your whale, your leviathan levels up, by the way. Your leviathan also levels up and becomes stronger and can give like blessings and gifts and like god powers to people. The game just keeps getting more complex. I don't really know what to say about it outside of that. It just keeps getting more complex. Like, the further in I get, the more stuff there is to fit. You guys finished that already? All those work orders? Really? Wow. Okay, so I gotta figure out how to sell this stuff to my adventurers now. I think that's gonna be my, my next big thing that I have to figure out how to do. Ah, uh, there it is. It's on the tech tree, actually, underneath this guy right here. So at a certain point, I will be able to reset them all. Uh, this guy over here, I don't even know if he's like an adventurer, if he's just like wandering around town. There's Caroline, though. Caroline, are you one of us? Her favor's not quite there yet, but what we do need to do is we need to make a new adventurer's dormitory so that we can keep having more people move in. So give me two more adventurers dormitories real fast, and I'll just kind of add them in this area on this side. How many free workers do I have right now? 15? Okay, so free workers are all going to be assigned to clearing debris off of my back. I don't know what this building is right here. It says an ancient lotus pond that brings back your dead adventurers. Okay, so that's the res spot for our little pseudo MMO here that we're running. Gotcha. This entire area was debris, by the way, before I started playing. It takes a good long while to get all the debris cleared out. Let's go back to the island and figure out if there's anything that we can actually do over here to get things done. So it looks like they refresh monsters, you get bloodline material. I guess I give an explore order right there, maybe? Let's see what happens. I'm not exactly sure how I send a party into the dungeon to go fight with creatures. But I'll start out by putting an explore flag over there. I don't know where all of my guys are who are doing these tasks, but we'll keep them on it for now. Looks like Parkin and them are working on the... I need to get like these higher level guys to go do something that's more their speed, I think. I also kind of need Parkin to go back to town and re-equip. I think that would also be a good place to go. But let me go back to the city, and we'll go to the blacksmith very quickly. And inside the blacksmith's forge. Can I make armor here? Or do I need an armor shop for that? It looks like I need an armor shop for that. Armor shop. Where are you? Uh, yeah, it looks like the dye house is where we need. Like I said, there's going to be little translation things like. I don't think that I've ever thought of a dye house as being the place where you make uh, armor and clothing. But you know like those videos that come up on TikTok from China all the time? It actually kind of makes sense why they would call it that. Having watched a lot of those videos about harvesting silkworms and like how they process it and how they dye it and everything, else, it actually kind of makes sense that that's all like one go-to facility where you get it all done at. So weirdly enough, TikTok has made me smarter. This may be the first time in my life that TikTok actually gave me some kind of context for why something's named the way that it is inside of a game. So after fiddling around with it, it actually looks like you can gift equipment to anybody you want. Uh, so it doesn't matter. As long as they're in town, you can re-equip them. And they just count it as a gift, which makes their favor go up higher because they did not have to buy that object from your weapon shop. So there you go. I learned a thing today. 
I gave her a helmet and a spear, even though she's level two, and I gave her some pantalones too. And she seems to be all right. She seems to be doing okay. I think these guys are like angels or something. They all have the fallen apostle bloodline when they have wings like that. And they can have different wings of different colors. What is this guy? He is of the chivalrous bloodline, which I think is just human beings. Just like normal guys that go out and fight. Oh yeah, with our adventurer flag. Did anybody respond to that thing? Did they go in there? Doesn't look like they did. So you do have some modicum of control anyways when it comes to like what these guys are doing. So for example, I could take the battle flag down here and I could specifically assign the characters that I want to gain favor with me and join my society over there if I really wanted to, uh, just to focus the development of my town, which I like very, very much. As a, as a massive throbbing, I, I think, as a massive throbbing fan of Majesty, I really, really like this game. It is by no circumstances free of flaws. This is definitely a game that has a really messy UI that can be super difficult to like latch onto and figure out. Uh, it's, it's definitely got a pretty gnarly UI as far as video games are concerned. It's also got a lot of translation issues. Like I said at the beginning of the video, full disclosure, I don't know if it's quite ready yet for a Western distribution. However, that has not stopped me from Western consuming it. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, this is a pretty sick-ass game if you enjoy Majesty. And so here we are. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were fooling around with just a, a very, very incredibly unique title uh, called Leviathan's Fantasy. If you guys wanted to check out and get the game for yourself, I'll have a link for you down below in the description. Just fair warning. It's not a game that's for the timid. Uh, it's not a game that is going to tutorialize super well. They'll give you the basics in the tutorial, and you'll figure it out that way. But you are this is 100% a game that you're going to have to kind of like fiddle with and figure out along the way and just kind of like click stuff in the UI and for me, my enjoyment and my love of majesty made that work because I've been waiting for this game for over a decade. However, for other people that may not have that nostalgic love and understanding of majesty, having played all of them and all the sequels and everything, this game is going to be a little bit difficult to figure out. There's going to be some trial and error involved. And, you know, sometimes you're just going to have a quest that's in Chinese and you're going to have no idea what that quest is. And you're just going to have to kind of play the game normally until you accidentally trip it. It sort of is what it is. If you're okay with that little bit of a daunting adventure, go for it. I recommend it. The game is pretty cool. And honestly, I think that it's 73% rating is not reflective of the gameplay that you're getting here. I actually think this is a very, very, very good game. Uh, the 73% positive reviews that it has on Steam right now, I would guess are almost entirely due to the fact that the game's localization is very, very rough and there's a 1.0 stamped on top of it, which needs to be rectified. Like, what they need to do is they just need to hire a localization team to go through the whole thing uh, and just mash the thing out and get everything completely, you know, with little text overflow, things like that on the UI as well. That's all stuff that could be fixed. Uh, they could have just abbreviated this to, like, settled and not, you know? And then you wouldn't have that text overflow. There's lots of little UI things like that, too. But still, it's a great game if you can put up with the weird little UI gore things that are around and the translational issues that are around. It really sincerely is. It's a cool game. I will catch you all later. Thank you for stopping on in. That's about all I got for you. And I'll catch you all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet because it'll be that time to sift through the pile and find what's worthwhile once more. Take care, folks. And that's all I got for you.